it's not often that a man asks me to meet at the sewage farm and I say <laughs> yes, but for Sean Dooley... It may be a sewage farm, but for bird watchers, this is the happiest place on earth. Since the construction of the treatment plant, the region has become a haven for tens of thousands of birds. Nearly 300 species have been recorded on site, even more than Australia's famous natural wetlands of Kakadu. And Sean knows the perfect vantage point to see the threatened migratory shorebirds that come to visit from thousands of kilometres away. Probably most of these are recently arrived from Siberia and Alaska. There's redneck stints are the smallest ones, and there's also curly sandpipers and sharp-tailed sandpipers on oh, a whole bunch of whiskered terns as well. And they're basically, some of them are having a little bit of a rest, a little bit of a roost. By the time the wastewater reaches these lagoons, all that's left is something very close to fresh water. What they don't quite get rid of is the high nitrogen levels and the high phosphate levels. So that actually creates a really rich habitat uh, and increases the amount of food available for these shorebirds that have flown, in some cases, 12,000 kilometres from their breeding grounds. So in some ways, having the, the sewage farm here has created a better habitat for these birds. The Western Treatment Plant is now an internationally recognised and protected wetland. You can get well over 10,000 migratory shorebirds here at the height of summer. Oh, That's a lot of our migratory shorebirds are, as a group of birds, they're, they're our fastest declining group because they are losing habitat between here and the Arctic Circle where they breed, particularly in places like the Yellow Sea in China and Korea that have been developed so heavily and the, the tidal mudflats have been reclaimed, as they say, and so they've lost those key stopover areas to feed on their migration. As a self-confessed bird nerd, this place is heaven and a chance for me to put my bird spotting skills to the test. He sounds like he's right here. Yeah. What percentage do you reckon of bird watching is actually bird listening? <laughs> uh, it's probably 80%. Yeah, I reckon it's... too. It's really high, isn't yeah. it? I reckon I've just seen fly into the bushes like a bright green streak. I can't be sure, but I think I just got a glimpse of something that looks like an orange-bellied parrot. I didn't see it, but I definitely heard an orange-bellied parrot. Oh, uh, but orange-bellied parrots are like one of the rarest birds in Australia, right? Yeah, yeah. They, they're less than 200 in the wild, and even just five years ago, there were only two wild female birds. This bird is rarer than a panda. Like, there are less, yeah. fewer orange-bellied parrots in the world than there are tigers. It's incredibly rare. But while we can hear it, this critically endangered bird is staying well hidden. It's just tantalisingly out of view. People think of bird watchers as really chilled, but they're incredibly... <laughs> angst-ridden because we know there is one of the rarest animals on the planet somewhere in front of us. Yeah. And we just can't see it. <laughs> Suddenly, Sean spots something. I've got one. There's one, there's one. I think that's Sean's seen another orange-bellied parrot. There's two. <gasps> yes. Yes, when you see its butt, it does, does look like a green parrot. But when it turns around, it has the most amazing blue monobrow um, that makes it look a little bit like a muppet. And of course, an orange belly, like golden orange, like a sunset. Like these birds are next level. For a bird watcher, for anyone, this is an important thing. And the fact that it's right here on the edge of one of our biggest cities in Australia is mind blowing. Orange bellied parrots have suffered severely from habitat loss and introduced predators. 
but conservation efforts are working. This year, the wild breeding population increased from 50 to 62 individuals. Oh my God, it's right at the top. Yeah. Sorry, I just spotted it. Yeah. <gasps> Two of them. Look, at you can see his little monobrow. The monobrow. And you can even see, I think that's a female, but you can see the orange belly. Oh, so there's three. There's three. Yeah. There's three. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm like I, I'm actually kind of tearing up because it's like it's been about five years since I've seen them. What does it mean seeing these birds? To be honest, you know, we thought they were functionally extinct. You know, just a few years ago, we thought there's every chance these birds won't be here by 2020, and they've come come back. It's still precarious. It's still a knife edge, but. The fact that they're here, like these three birds, we don't know how many are alive at the moment, but it, that might be 3% of the world's population. It might be 6% if, if they had a bad winter. So, I don't know, there's something, they're gorgeous and you kind of forget it until you see them again. So, yeah, I can't believe how emotional <laughs> I'm getting. It literally looks like it's had a roll around in some oil paints. <laughs> Absolutely stunning. With many urban wetlands threatened by development, the Western treatment plant remains a vital habitat for vulnerable bird species. It shows that wild birds can not only live close to our cities, but even benefit from them.